<laughs> All right, I just pulled out my camera because that's how this works. This is Joe Madosh. If you don't know Joe, he's a huge brain. Um, smarter than me, talks faster than me, if you can imagine that. He's wearing a hat so he looks like a normal person. But you just came from Greenbuild. Greenbuild 2019 here in Atlanta. That's okay. why I stopped over and got to see Corbett. And if you guys don't know, Greenbuild is the is the USGBC lead. It's always been like architects and stuff like that. But yeah, you but just it used to be said, builders too. It used to be like how to build things and and how to install materials. And you know they actually used to do uh, on site how to do stuff. Kind of like what a uh, international builder show does today. Right. No so, longer. No more. Yeah. So now it's about. So so what did you get out of it? That it was more like um, a ResNet um, for lead providers or lead APs or people that do lead or design or pick out materials. It was very- and I will confess, yeah. I was a lead AP. That was my first certification because it's the easiest one to challenge because it's a written test. Um, but aside from that, materials, right? You said that somebody's yes. actually getting actual what's in the materials. Yeah, so that was the big thing this year. So um, last year was resiliency. In fact, the new term for green is resilient. They, uh, they, they apply the same way on how we think <laughs> about it. So instead of saying green, it's resilience. Okay. And that has to do more than just surviving a tornado. It's about long-term durability and viability and workability. So, okay. um, but the, now they are convinced that you need to know what are the materials in theory, it's a good start. What are the materials in the products you are now uh, specking? So they're getting there's several ways to do it. One of which is uh, Living Future Institute has a uses a red list, which are actually carcinogens. So they actually say, give us your ingredients, give us your chemicals, and they will put them in. And they actually will review it. They actually apply their own cool. knowledge to it, and they have a declare list. Anything that's larger than one part per million must be declared. Um, you don't have to do third party, but you can do through third party. Uh, but that'll that'll probably be required at some point. And what, right? so, so the concept is, let's get started. Let's just, yeah, hey, right. hey, volunteer everybody. Cool. And now some people are already doing that. So Hayward Score is one of the places where you can get more information because Joe is at Hayward Score. So that's HaywardScore.com. And you can find out more about how your home plugs into all this. But of course, like most, you know, all the things that we're using on this house uh, are not this disclosed product list. Now, and, and in some cases that doesn't matter too much, but in a lot of cases when you're checking like interior finishes, what a lot of architects are specking, carpets, uh, yeah, car flooring, hardwood, that's right. sealants, yeah. uh -huh. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that, that could become a really big deal. So we should all be paying attention to this because it is a thing that is a problem is that manufacturers? Oh, well, tight homes, tight homes, and lots of chemicals are a nasty recipe for uh, unhealthy people. Right, exactly. Okay, so make sure you comment, like, subscribe, visit HaywardScore.com. Tune in next time.